It's the mission of the Asheville City Schools Foundation to engage the community in increasing excellence with equity for all children in our schools. As we approached our 30th anniversary, the board and staff assessed our progress to that goal, and we just weren't satisfied with the results. The 1954 Brown versus Board of Education decision was a major step forward in the 20th century in ensuring that we had an integrated education system. But it would still take a while, even after uh, 1954, before the state of North Carolina would take active action to ensure that um, the schools were integrated. I went all through school in a segregated environment. Stevens Lee was an all-black high school. In the 40s and early 50s, Stevens Lee had more teachers with master's degrees than any high school in North Carolina, black or white. Most of those teachers, their master's degrees came from Columbia, Yale, the University of Chicago, schools like that, and they expected excellence. I mean, they pushed us. The reason they had their degrees from those schools is North Carolina paid them to get their masters because they didn't want them going to Carolina or North Carolina State or those schools in the time because of segregation. What you had really with integration was a case where African Americans were being really taken out of what was familiar to them to go to what was unfamiliar. Stevens Lee is a case in point. It's a school that I think was very important to the African American community, but the school was not integrated. The students that went to Stevens Lee left that school to go to Lee Edwards, which became Asheville High School. I attended Asheville High from 1980 or 81 until 84. Asheville uh, City Schools was slow to integrate. The intent to maintain integration, it was very noticeable and apparent. We had two principals. They were co-principals. One was black, one was white. There had to be two co-presidents of Student Congress. One was black, the other had to be white. If the homecoming queen was black, then Miss Asheville High had to be white or vice versa. There was an upside to it and there was a downside to it. And I think that this is something that scholars, both white and African-American scholars, are now trying to reassess what were the benefits and what were the things that were lost with integration as well. And the big problem that I see in the city schools today, and we fought with it for eight years when I was on the school board, is the achievement gap. It's continuing to get wide. When I was in school in 84, the achievement gap wasn't talked about. It seems like to me, instead of the gap closing, it's getting wider. I would say that in the classes that you know challenge me and interest me the most, there's not integration at all. The most segregated part of my day um, are my AP classes. Um, and just not a lot of diversity at all. I feel like I exist at a different school. Like, the majority of my classes are white, especially AP, it's I've always been white. Yeah, only time I see other people in the hallways, in the cafeteria. When I listen to my parents tell stories about their experiences in a segregated school system, the one thing that was quite clear is that they had African-American teachers who were who made them um, live up to a standard. A lot of those teachers, when the schools desegregated, they came from Stevens Lee over to Asheville High. And once they retired, no one else desired to be a teacher. When you see a teacher that um, looks like you, I feel like you try harder, and then the teacher, he might have the same background as one of these students, so he might know that this student can do it. If you continue to tell them that they don't do as well, and this gap isn't closing, some of them give up. Why should I try? They were sheltered away from higher courses, and they were actually told, like, you shouldn't do this, and there was a fear from even applying for honors level courses because 
they were they had such a, a image in their mind of it being beyond their own reach. The racial issue becomes um, a problem there when you have mostly white teachers who are teaching black kids. It's tough for them to to push out of fear of being called racist in um, in demanding that you meet a standard. When I was here in 1984, we had 11 African American teachers. Today, we have four. You've got to expect all your kids to succeed and do well. I don't feel that it's always that way when it comes to the African American kids. Our board is holding these community conversations because we want to hear from you about how we can better support excellence and equity for all students in Asheville City Schools. And I feel hopeful. Teachers and school leaders are leaning into this difficult conversation. Our school district has adopted a bold strategy to reshape our schools. And I see this community showing up for these conversations because that is what our children really need. They need all of us to be committed for the long haul to achieve excellence with equity for all of our students.